Here we have a technological artifact that could not be replicated until the 20th century. This is the Lycurgus Cup. Lycurgus was the lawgiver of Sparta, and Lycurgus wanted the Spartans to be tough. But the interesting part here is that this is a single cup, it's a dichromic cup, which means that if you shine light from the front, it's going to be green, and if you shine light from the back, it's going to be red. This is achieved through very finely ground particles of silver and gold at the nanometer scale. Ancient Roman evidence of highly advanced ancient technology. This cup has a special property that causes its color to vary depending on the direction or strength of the light. How could this cup do such a remarkable task? And was nanotechnology employed during the production process? Was this technology developed by the ancient Romans at that time, or was it just a coincidence? Let's find out. A beautiful example of Roman glassmaking is the jade green chalice with the carefully etched picture of King Lycurgus twisted in grapevines. However, the fundamental innovation of these Roman artists, their use of nanotechnology, can only be appreciated upon closer inspection. Most likely a ceremonial cup, the Lycurgus cup from the 4th century is now housed at the British Museum. It shows King Lycurgus of Thrace impaled on vines allegedly for insulting the wine deity Dionysus in Greek mythology. It's interesting that no one knows why the Lycurgus cup's color changes under illumination. Was there a ritual involved? Was it a ruler's tool for detecting poison? Was it only to exhibit light and color so exquisitely? One of the earliest products to use nanotechnology was the Lycurgus cup. Even while it is unlikely that the creators were aware of the explanation for the exceptional optical properties of the cup, modern science has shown just how sophisticated the manufacturing procedures used to create the cup were. The story behind the cup. An enigmatic artifact from the end of the Roman era is called the Lycurgus cup. It's a cage cup, which means that a lovely cage pattern surrounds the main cup. King Lycurgus of Thrace's rage and demise are shown in this cage's design. King Lycurgus is depicted in at least one Greek and Roman tale as attempting to murder Ambrosia, a devotee of the deity Dionysus. This interpretation of the story claims that Ambrosia was turned into wine by the gods, who then gathered around the monarch and slaughtered him. Two of Dionysus's disciples make fun of the hapless monarch on the cup relief. Nanotechnology Properties The Lycurgus Cup is not only a gorgeous work of art, but also a very expensive one. The cup is priceless since it was made using precious metals like silver and gold. It's interesting that no one knows why the Lycurgus Cup was designed to change color when lighted. Engineer Gang Logan Liu from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign believes there is a benefit to investigating this object and its technology. He has been concentrating on how to diagnose and treat diseases using nanotechnology. Lu claims that the Romans were skilled in creating and utilizing nanoparticles for exquisite art. We were interested in exploring any potential scientific uses for this. Lu postulated that when a treated vessel was filled with various liquids, the vibrating electrons would change the color of the glass accordingly. The Lycurgus cup couldn't be used in the experiment for fear of damage. Instead, the researchers created an array of billions of incredibly small, small Lycurgus cups by imprinting countless tiny wells onto a plastic plate the size of a postage stamp and dousing them with gold or silver nanoparticles. The wells showed a variety of easily distinguishable colors when water, oil, sugar solutions, and salt solutions were put into them such as light green for water and red for oil. 
The prototype sensitivity to changed salt levels in solution was 100 times greater than that of comparable commercial sensors now on the market. Therefore, a technology created 1,600 years ago has the potential to be used today. It raises the question of what nanotechnology actually is. Is this science insanity? A revolution in atomic engineering? The two? In essence, nanotechnology involves controlling systems and processes at the atomic scale, a world so tiny that it is beyond the comprehension of non-scientists. The word nanotechnology is a Greek word that means dwarf. What kind of scale are we referring to? A nanometer is a very small unit of measurement that is one billionth, ten to nine, of a meter in length, or around one hundred thousandth of the breadth of a human hair. The last twenty years have seen a development in nanotechnology. A substantial effort is currently being made to develop applications for the research's continuous usage. Nanobots have the potential to locate and eliminate cancer cells. Modern surgical instruments, diagnostic methods, and medication delivery systems have the potential to change medicine. Nanotechnology has promise for anti-terrorism programs since it can swiftly ascertain the makeup of unidentified liquids, chemicals, and substances to stop assaults. The food sector is looking into the use of nanoparticles to improve health, isolate hazardous microorganisms, and increase shelf life. Nanopatterning is also producing quicker, clearer, smaller, larger, ever more stunning, jaw-dropping gadgets, phones, and computers for our ever-expanding world of electronics. Accident or Intention There is substantial debate about whether or not the Romans produced the glass by accident because it is unknown how they did it. Imagine if the Romans had a glass-blowing facility next to a goldsmith's workshop. In such a situation, some speculate that microscopic gold and silver particles on kills or other machinery found their way into the cup during the glassmaking process. But there's a chance that the Romans knew something about producing glass that we don't. Although glassmaking was a very common profession in ancient Rome, there aren't many Roman glass artifacts in museums now since so much glass was recycled. Where is it now? Because of its exceptional condition, it is widely assumed that the Lycurgus Cup spent the vast majority of the intervening years above ground. It may have been removed from a burial at a young age, or it might have been kept in the church's riches together with many other wonderful Roman relics. Although we may never fully understand the object's past, we do know that Baron Lionel Nathan de Rothschild held it at some point in the 1800s. After that, in 1958, it was donated to the British Museum, where it has been preserved eternally.